The second speaker in tonight's panel is Mr. Warren Wang. Now, Warren Wang is a student of the Chinese Communist Party, and he's currently director of a mortgage brokerage company, and he is a dissident former member of the Chinese Communist Party in China. Uh, and he came to Australia seven years ago, and um, because of his perspective as a former member of the CCP, he's, he has become involved in Australian politics uh, in issues which he believes are really important. And I would like you to welcome Mr. Warren Wang, please. Thank you all. Um, good, good evening. And my topic today is about uh, this one behind the Chinese contradiction. Uh, to start with, I want to show a uh, one minute video clip. It should be very entertaining. Well, I think if they go in jail, there must be some reason. Well, you don't think that the communist government is a little bit dodgy? No. 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 Are you Aussie? No. You've got an Aussie accent. Oh, well, how, how long have you been in Australia? Nine years. Nine years? Yeah. You don't believe that the communist government do wrong? No. no. Many people are afraid of the Chainese government. Like me, I'm Chinese, alright? I'm a mainland Chinese. If I say something bad about the government, my safety is at risk. I have to say. What would happen? If I didn't cover your face now, what would happen when you went back home? I'd get arrested or my father or my mother would get like bad blackmail, you know? All this, I don't know. Everything's possible. Do you prefer communism or capitalism? Communism. Yeah. Do you live here? Yeah. Why? Because we're here to learn. Oh, well, you're studying? Yeah, I'm studying. So you're you're going to go back after? Yeah, of course. Oh, of so course. You, you prefer communism? Yeah. And you don't think that the co the government in China does anything wrong? Yeah. No. No wrong. No wrong at all. So, stop, so putting people in jail for, for practicing religion is okay? Yeah. Yes. Freedom of speech, stopping people from protesting, it's okay? Yes. <laughs> oh, I... okay. um, yeah, this short video clip is, I think it's very entertaining, but also very disturbing. Um, I'm a big fan of this producer, and many of his videos uh, present the same inter interesting contradiction among different group of, groups of people. Um, well, my topic today is um, how to understand those self-contradicted patriotic Chinese living in Australia or in general in, living in the Western civilization. Um, it sounds so obvious that thousands of Chinese students coming to Australia every year aiming to immigrate to this country permanently and to transfer as much as their family assets to this country. I used to call this an exile. It is, not, it is not uncommon that the richest and the most powerful people in every socialist country either have their family moving to the western countries or have Swiss bank accounts with huge banks. But on the other side, this generation of the Chinese people is so different. With three decades of blessings from the limited economic freedom permitted by the Chinese Commun Communist Party, China has become a superpower at yeah, national level. Unlike the previous presidents, the current Chinese president loves to show off, which creates a global dis dissatisfaction. While some people like the US President Donald Trump wisely pushed a stronger than ever China for a fair deal, others like the Chinese international students in Australia blindly buy the delusion sold by the Chinese president that China is truly stronger than ever and all the Western countries that have oppressed China for so, so long time will now inevitably heavily rely on China economically. And now we can finally be so proud of being a Chinese. The, the recent clash between China and Hong Kong is a textbook example of the clash between two different mindsets. If it is not a clash, between civilization and barbarism. Once in a lifetime, those international Chinese students finally got a chance to protest their very first political protest. Across the rallies all over the world, 
There are three typical features among those Chinese international students and those overseas patriotic Chinese in general. One is being blindly patriotic, secondly, being verbally aggressive, and lastly, uh, being very single-minded. Then, back to my topic question, how this can possibly happen? If one doesn't cherish the freedom and the democracy of the West, why on earth he or she intends to leave the authoritarian China under the Chinese Communist Party if one so desperately shows his or her love and loyalty to the motherland China? Why on earth he or she still stands firmly on the land of freedom? If the West is so bad and China is so good, why on earth studying abroad has any values? My answer to all these self-contradicted questions is only one simple big word, which is faith. These questions, I believe, may apply to many believers who have the faith in their religion of peace. If one doesn't cherish the freedom and the democracy of the West, why on earth he or she intends to leave the authoritarian Middle East? If one des desperately shows his or her love and the lo loyalty to a mass murderer, why on earth he or she still stands firmly on the land of rule of law? If the West is so bad and the land of the prophet is so good, why on earth coming to an evil Western country has any merits? <laughs> Though there are some similarities between a blind religious faith and a blind political faith, Two features I found interesting are uh, among the Chinese patriotic people. Um, the first one is the cult of money, and the second one a quite romanticizing patriotism. Um, don't get me wrong, as a firm mark, free market believer and a firm capitalism follower and a mortgage broker, I love money. <laughs> However, there is a natural law setting the boundary of loving money, which is used to be called property rights. Your money is your money, my money is my money. I can use my goods and services to exchange your money, but I should not steal or rob your money by any means whatsoever. But in China, due to the lack of, lack of rule of law and the pro proper political freedom, the economic freedom shows a horrible power in many circumstances. On one hand, the imported Marxist ideology promotes that all religion is the opium of the people. On the other hand, with the decade-long Cultural Revolution and the Tiananmen Massacre, moral standards reached a historically low point in the Chinese history. In such a background, a country of no faith finally found something to grab. That was money. Exactly 30 years ago, at the end of the 1980s, in the West, the Berlin Wall fell apart. In China, the Great War of Money started to be built. In the following three decades, a culture of money worshipping prevails in the whole country. For a simple example, Jack, Jack Ma, uh, the richest guy in China, is also called Daddy Ma, Daddy Ma, unashamedly by the public. Money talks. A systemic corruption is not only inside the government, but also inside the whole society. Also, the cult of money creates a culture of lies. Nothing can be easily trusted. Thousands of young students died in 2008 earthquake, not, not due to the natural disaster itself, but due to the poor building construction quality. Thousands of, if not ten thousands of, newborn babies got severe health issues due to the chemical baby formula and the fake vaccines. While in the society, gradually, people started to believe whoever makes more money is superior to the others. The value system is only accepted by large this value system is not only accepted by large at a personal level, but also at a national level. China is now the second largest economy in the world. This means to many, many Chinese people, China is superior to many Western countries. And therefore, 
China's value system, economic system, and the political system are all about the Western ones. The second feature I noticed is what I call romanticizing patriotism, or in other words, while the Communist Party deliberately mutes all kinds of criticism for their wrongdoings. Over time, they also pass a particular value to the people, which is none is perfect, even the Communist Party, but all was done necessarily for the good of the people at, the, at a particular historical point. They, in a way, do not fully deny the fact that they made wrong decisions from time to time, but they justify their own behaviors in the name of patriotism. For people in the West, it may sound not easy for the government to purposely brainwash a whole generation of people in such a way. But it's actually not that hard. It's definitely through propaganda and via two major channels, which are schools and the media. I think we can think it that way. A few, few weeks ago, some young school students in Australia in many Western countries took a strike for the so-called climate emergency. How much do they really know about science and the climate? How can this possibly happen? Well, one month ago, as my wife and I, we were looking for a potential child care centre for our newly born baby. We did a bit of research and we thought one big name child care centre should be a good one to start with. So, after a few after a few calls, a tour was provided by the child care centre. Guess what? I guess what I saw on the wall? It's climate change. So there, in that child care centre, the political idea of climate change has been implemented in one year old kids. And I think this is not a coincidence or exception. So with those kind of systemic propaganda through schools and media, day by day, week by week, month by month, year by year. A whole generation with very limited exceptions, wholeheartedly believing what they were told. In China, in Australia, in Europe, in the US, all over the world, different types of propaganda are eroding our future generations. For China in particular, I do not have much hope, and, and I think only probably a massive economic recession will make the people think differently and challenge their belief system. At the end of the day, it was not the Communist Party who lifted the country from poverty. It was capitalism, the wisdom from the West, that gave the economic miracles for China for the last three decades. So, I hope my presentation today gives some insights of the current construction of the, in the Chinese community. And I hope we can work together to fight the communism cancers. We should be reminded that communism cancer is real and is spreading among Chinese, uh, sorry, Australian political parties. Some suggestion was given by Bob, and I think the Australian government should really think about that. Um, I love this country wholeheartedly. I love freedom wholeheartedly. That's my presentation today. I mean, if anyone wants to connect with me, can I will leave some name cards at back, and uh, or can add me on Facebook. Thank you.